I've never really understood what all the excitement was about. A lot of times those figs don't ever ripen completely and they don't taste as good. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Thursday, March 7th here in South Georgia. And as you can see behind me here, we've made some significant improvements with our fig tree orchard expansion over the last couple days. So I'm gonna show you the progress so far and also show you some of our fig trees that are budding. So what was once a bunch of pine trees is now just stumps and several piles that we need to burn. And just as a side note, now that all these pine trees are gone, you can see that huge field behind me there. People always ask why we don't have deer coming up and eating our garden. It's because deer don't get close to our garden. They would have to walk across that huge field just to get to our garden. So they usually don't go that far. They usually stay in the woods way back there on the other side of that field. But anyways, all those pine trees were cut down and stacked into three nice big piles here that I'm working on slowly burning. So we had a crew come in here, about three guys with a chainsaw and a skid steer. Took them about a day and a half. They worked a lot faster than me and the boys did and they were able to knock it out and looks pretty good. It'll look really good once we get these piles burned down. Now you might be asking yourself, Trav, why in the world are you trying to burn some green trees that were just cut down? Don't you need to let those dry out a little bit? And you would be right, but we had two piles already that had dried out for several weeks. And I knew if I waited till the whole pile dried out and lit one of these piles, I was gonna have quite the fire on my hands and I didn't want it getting too hot. So the way they stacked them up, we had a lot of dry older stuff on bottom, green stuff on top. I already lit one earlier today and it gave me a nice slow burn. I didn't want this thing just engulfing in a hurry, getting real hot and maybe getting out of hand on me. So it ended up working pretty well to have some green stuff on top, kind of slow it down a little bit. So this pile here is the one I lit earlier today. It was about three times the size, about as tall as that next pile you see over there. And it burnt nice and slow, put a little diesel fuel on one side of it here, lit it, and kind of just slowly progressed this way. I knew it wasn't gonna burn all the way to the ground today because there's so much green stuff on it, but it did knock down the pile a good bit. We'll have to restack this and reburn it once it dries out a little bit more, but this keeps us from having such a big fire on our hands. And as that pile was burning, some of it spread out to where that pine straw was all over the ground and it's now kind of creeped over to this pile here a little bit. This one's not gonna burn all the way to the ground either because there's too much green stuff. There is some brown stuff on the bottom. So that one might slowly burn overnight tonight. It's not going anywhere because we've got so much dirt around it here. So it'll probably end up looking a lot like that pile by the morning. And over here on the other side of that second pile, you can see the pond dam is burning as well as a lot of this pine straw catches fire. And that was something I kind of wanted to do anyways, so that's okay. It's just kind of slowly working its way along here. I told those guys don't worry about cutting those stumps on that pond dam too close because it's kind of a dangerous proposition getting down there where it's wet and slippery and such a big slope. And I could have had those guys cut all these wax myrtles along the pond dam here, but I figured I'd leave those because overhanging the pond makes for some nice fish habitat. Usually fish like to hide under those overhanging limbs. So we'll leave those for the time being. If they ever get big and out of control, I can always take my pole saw and kind of cut those back. So I do want most of this pond dam to burn and it'll probably make its way on down here right around dark tonight. I want to stop it right here. So I took a rake, made me a little fire break. I don't think it will jump that, but I'll keep a close eye on it because I don't want the fire spreading over to those woods there. That's not part of my lease. Don't want to burn that. Just want to burn this part right here that we're going to be working with for all these new figs we'll be planting. Now I knew one of the downsides to hiring this out as opposed to continuing to chip away at it myself was going to be that their equipment was probably going to make a little bit of a mess, but it didn't make that big of a mess. So over here on the high ground, it's actually not that bad. There's a few ruts and tire tracks out there, but it's still relatively smooth. I could handle that with a rake, no problem. But down here on the bottom portion where it stays a little more wet, we've got some pretty decent ruts to work with. So I'm probably gonna have to 
get Brooklyn's uncle with his tractor to come out here and smooth this out a little bit because I really can't mow over those and we eventually want to have grass lanes between our trees just like we do with that part of the orchard. So the hard part's done. Now me and the boys just gotta burn down these piles, pick up a few of these limbs, and smooth out this dirt a little bit. As I told you on the previous videos, I really only need this first row this year. The other rows will be planted in subsequent years, so I don't necessarily have to get it all ready at one time. And because I know somebody's gonna ask, let me explain why we didn't chip up all this stuff while we're burning it. If we would have added a chipper in the equation, that's just another expense on top of paying what I had to pay to get these trees cut down and piled up. Doesn't cost me anything to burn them and actually get a lot of satisfaction out of it. And before we take a walk around the fig orchard, let me just give you an update on our baby fig trees that we have growing in the greenhouse. We've got a lot of pre-orders for these so far. We've still got more to add to inventory as we step up more trees that we have in the greenhouse. As I've told you before, these will start shipping probably early April. Maybe some of the southern states like Florida in late March, but let's just say early April to be safe. And then as temperatures warm, we'll be shipping to the middle of the country and the northern part of the country. So still have quite a few varieties in stock. You can go check those out at lazydogfarm.com. So this is pretty much what you'll be getting here. They might be a little bit bigger than this, but uh, about this size in early April. As the year goes on, the trees get bigger. We start shipping bigger trees as they grow. But uh, the first round of trees will probably look something like this. Now let's take a little stroll around the orchard. And as you can see, most of our in-ground trees have woken up. The ones that bud out first and put on a bunch of leaves first are usually the ones that produce first. So that Canadria tree right there and this LSU tiger tree right here are usually my first producers. So it only makes sense that they've got more leaves than any other variety I have out here right now. But not all of them have completely woken up. This Violet de Bordeaux tree, which is always a little late to the game, is just starting to wake up. We can see a few little buds forming right there. So this will not as fast to put on new leaves as something like Canadria, but it will get there and give us some nice delicious figs. Now on this Mary Lane tree right here, you will notice that we've already got some little figs forming there. Those are what they call Braba figs. So as I've told you in the past, your main crop of figs is gonna come on new growth. But there are some varieties that produce a few early figs on the old growth, and those are called Braba figs. Now on some of the fig forums out there online and some of the fig groups I'm in on Facebook, people get all excited about some Braba figs. I've never really understood what all the excitement was about. A lot of times those figs don't ever ripen completely and they don't taste as good as the main crop figs. But I guess if you've just got a couple fig trees, it's something to get excited about. But I usually don't get that excited about it. Like I said, sometimes they don't ripen, sometimes they don't really taste that well. I'm more looking forward to the main crop crop of figs. That's why on our website I don't mention anything about Braba figs on any of the product pages, but just know some varieties do produce a few of those early figs on old growth. And just for tickles and giggles, I'll show you a few more varieties that are putting on some Braba figs. So this is an LSU Scots black tree that's only a couple years old, maybe not even two years old yet. And this tree has shown out just beautiful, growing a ton. There's one of those little Braba figs right there on this tree. I think we're out of stock on this variety at the moment, but I do have more to add in the next month or so. And here's a few more Braba figs on this cherry cordial tree. I think we actually got about three of them on here. You can see those aren't green like the other ones I showed you. Those got more of a red color to them. And while we're out here, let me re-emphasize the benefits of pruning, especially with these young trees. This is a variety called LSU White Honey. This tree is not even two years old. Back during the fall when we were doing our pruning, we cut the tips out of this tree. So cut off that tip, we cut off that tip, and we cut off that tip. And what happens is we get all these buds forming here. So we're gonna get tons of branching on this tree this year that we probably wouldn't have gotten if we wouldn't have cut that tip out. So now we're gonna get significantly more new growth and new growth means more figs. And you can see the same thing happening here with this Smith fig tree. 
cut the tips off this one and look at all those buds forming all up and down that little tree so pruning the tip of those fig trees is not something you have to do but hopefully you can see there the benefits of doing that and on those younger one to two year old trees instead of just getting a few figs this year we might get a bowl full of figs because we're going to have significantly more new growth forming so I hope you enjoyed the video today and I can't wait until early June when we actually have some ripe figs out here and I can show you some of these varieties that we planted within the last year. Don't forget, if you want to grab some of our fig trees, you can do that at LazyDogFarm.com. And if you want to see what some of our figs looked like last year, some of those big juicy ripe figs, watch this video right here and we'll show you several of the varieties that we have in our orchard. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.